Well, hey, friends, I'm so glad that you're with me on another edition of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Really excited to have uh, not only a fellow guy, but a fellow musician that's here with me, Stanton Lanier uh, from the Metro Atlanta area. Stanton, so glad that you're here, man. Welcome. Thank you so much, Matt. It's an honor to be with you and just excited to be on your on your uh, show and just engage with your listeners. So thank you. Absolutely. I was joking with you before. I said I was reading your bio. I didn't know if I was going to like you because I've read that you were a Georgia Tech guy. But then I saw well, he made it to University of Georgia for his MBA. So I said, we're going to be OK. But <laughs> for yes, those folks sir. that are just getting to know you, tell <laughs> us the little bit of the backstory, who you are, what you do, that sort of thing. And and then we'll wow. uh, kind of jump into what God's been up to in your life. Yes. Well, I, I grew up in North Carolina and then the Florida Panhandle. Uh, but my parents were from Athens and Winder, Georgia. They actually both went to University of Georgia, and my yeah. grandparents lived in Athens. So it was kind of between North Carolina and Florida my whole life, seeing my grandparents in Athens, Georgia, and I knew all about the Bulldogs and you know, big fans with the family. And then God you know, led me that season to Georgia Tech for undergrad, um, but I wanted to get an MBA a little bit later, and that's what took me to Athens. Um, and I eventually landed in a financial planning career um, after some, some – career struggle and searching um, yeah. and then eventually you know god used all this to prepare me to one day be a composer and a musician and write uh scripture inspired instrumental music on the piano and 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 then now now i kind of orchestrate that as well so that's so incredible um, I'm, I'm sure so many people are like now now hold on hold on hold on, hold on. he's got an mba he was a yeah. financial planner and he's a musician if you right. said like, how did, let's kind of roll the tape back. You like, go. were you a music, musician growing up? Did you, yes. like I started playing piano when I was five years old. A right. Fellow Methodist guy growing up, you know, I mean, we, yeah. so was that your story as well? Playing early I on? did start piano lessons. My mom, uh, my mom's dad. So my grandfather on my mom's side was a violinist and his, wow. he was the only child and his parents both, he would always say they could tear up a piano like his. <laughs> so my great grandparents, <laughs> Uh, who my, my great grandmother's name was Maud Stanton. And so I get my, my given name comes from my great grandmother's maiden name. Wow. Uh, Maud Stanton. And so my grandfather had two daughters, my mom, one of those daughters, and she had three boys. I'm the oldest of three boys. And she wanted all of us to take piano lessons. So I was the oldest and I was the first guinea pig, you know, in, in the first grade. So at age six, um, I took a, started piano lessons. And uh, that first year was on these electronic keyboards with headphones and a kind of a group class. So the teacher went around and could listen in to each student, but you were kind of quiet to the room because yeah. you had you were just playing on your headphones and she'd plug in and listen. That beginning for me, I think, made it a little bit more fun because because we were playing hot cross buns and Mary had a little lamp, you know, <laughs> um, just single note, uh, yeah. match, match, the, <laughs> match the letter with the key kind of thing. Um, but because it was headphones and these keyboards and, you know, I was six years old, that was kind of cool. Um, so 12 years of piano lessons growing up um, and a season of a little bit of wanting to quit in middle school because of sports, yeah. which I think sadly happens to a lot of young men, especially, uh, but men or women can both give up music for sports maybe. And I think you can do both. I think oftentimes yeah. you know, there's a good balance there to have both those in your life. So anyway, I do have that background. And I think a lot of our passions and giftings are rooted in our childhood, but we may not have tapped into them or God may still want to use those in our life, you know, even yeah. in the future from now. So, well, I know, you know, for me, my mom was a, a Methodist choir director. So, I mean, I was at church all the time, That, but that was kind of the context. I think she was also a high school, you know, choral director and that sort of thing. So yeah. in my mind, if you were going to be a musician or anything, it, it was going to either have to be at church or at school or something yeah. like that. And I really didn't have any other kind of context for that. And it's, I think it's amazing right. for, all of us that have, you know, you kind of look back on your creative journey, context really matters. Cause if you don't, if you don't see anybody else doing something that you want to do yeah. a lot of times, or you, or you don't see it, it as possible. A lot of times the shiny object of how hey, you can make more money over here, or this would right. be a, this is a real job and that's not um, right. all that source of starts to muddy the water. And a lot of times our creativity kind of gets pushed to the to the side or to the, the back seat. So was that happening for, for you as well? And yes, it's so well said, Matt. Um, and I, this is probably a lot, a lot of people's story. I mean, I started writing songs and when I was 14, so I learned, I was at a choir camp and we had to compose a song and it was an assignment, but I found out I could do this. And I started writing songs in high school that I would play and sing on the piano. Um, but I thought like being a piano teacher was the only path for the piano. Right. 
And, and as a basketball player in high school, I thought being a coach and then the real long shot of playing college and professional basketball. So I'm like, and everybody said, you're such a good student. You should be an engineer. You know, you're good at math. You're good at science. So well, well-meaning people in our life oftentimes give good um, common sense advice, right? But the Lord, he, he's going to use it in our story. But I, I did not have those voices in my life saying, hey, you know, you're you really might have a gift on the piano and for composing and songwriting. Like, yeah. have you ever thought about applying to one music school, you know, or one, but it's just interesting. I, I kind of took the practical path and that's kind of how I was wired at the time. And God's still redeeming that in my life. Like he, you know, practical is important, but he's oh, yeah. so much bigger than that. He's so much bigger with his, anything is possible with him that it's not always going to be practical and make sense when it's the faith journey of obedience. Um, yeah. So it, it came in time, but yeah, at that season, you're exactly right. It, that's what happened for me. I did not have a contextual example of how do you make a living in piano or basketball, you know? Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. I, I'm imagining in so many of the artists that I've interviewed and worked with over the years, at some point in your life, there's this come to Jesus moment, if you will, where you're like, mm-hmm. I can't do this stuff anymore that I've been doing. I know there's more out there. I'm not sure quite how to get there. And so Right. I'm, a, I'm imagining you, you're a sharp guy. I could tell, I mean, yeah. probably had a thriving financial planning business, excited, you know, doing great things, helping clients, all that sort of thing, but something starting to, to churn inside of you for music. So what was that transition like? Because yeah. it's always so frustrating and challenging when the Lord asks us to let go of the thing that we've had in order to take hold of the thing that, that he's got for us. That's right. Well, I, I want to bridge that over just for a second to yeah. where I, I did have one job after Georgia Tech before the NBA, and it was in a carpet mill. I was a shift manager. And at three in the morning one night in a pile of wet carpet, the machine had broken down. That was a moment where I'm like, what in the world? Like, I'm, I'm in a pile of wet carpet, and it's three in the morning, a uh, small town in Georgia, you know, yeah. like, why, why am I here? You know, and it was like a... a, a I was still wasn't ready to surrender, which is really odd because it was so profound. Like I should have said, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? But it took about um, eight more years for me to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And that's when the financial planning career, God invited me into that. It became a real, a real calling and a purposeful career for the first time after being in several jobs, trying to succeed. And that's where my striving part of me to it striving to achieve was something happening in that story until I surrendered. And then the financial planning career came. So from that window, there was about a 10 year business window where I was surrendered to God and I was in my calling. And I thought I'd do that for the rest of my life. I thought I would retire as a financial planner and piano had stayed a hobby. I had never put it down. I had never stopped playing. I was not writing songs as much but I never stopped playing. I could still play a Bach piece from memory or Moonlight Sonata or something from a classical uh, uh, training, you know, growing up or one of maybe a little bit of one of my songs. Uh, so it was alive, but it was latent. Um, and then the Lord started to stir my heart because of the spiritual development in my faith and wanting to hear his voice so much. I just, I just wanted him to speak into my life. And, um, I did that Henry Blackaby, uh, experiencing, experiencing God, God yeah. Bible study. And, and, and about, uh, that was about 1998, and um, he just, re- the Lord really spoke to me through that. And uh, I believe he was starting to stir me even then toward this idea that he could use my music ability for his glory, yeah. you know, but it would be a few more years before that pursuing God and his voice and longing to hear his voice. There came a day where I needed to get the equipment to do a little recording just for fun is what I thought. But as I s- obeyed that step, he gave me the idea to take scripture and compose an instrumental melody. Um, That was in May of 2000. Wow. So I was, I was a financial planner for four more years, but I wrote 30 uh, melodies, 30 songs, but they're instrumental, but they're from the scripture, you know? And so I released three CDs as a financial planner back in the day, then when CDs were still the thing. Um, Remember those? They were round, shiny. I know. know. (laughs) We thought they were so cool. They were small and didn't take up as much space and (laughs) had a really high quality audio file. Um, Anyway, so I'm a financial planner by day. Over about a four year, five, four year window, I wrote 30 songs uh, and had a young family, had a had a three year old and a newborn, you know, had, had young children and my wife. And so 
it was like he was growing two branches on the tree, if you will. If yeah. Our life is like a tree and there's God births these branches on our journey. And one of the ways my wife put it is you can't do both these branches. You can't like be a financial planner and like you, something's yeah. going to have to give here, you know, because yeah. I was so passionate about the music. And so in 2004, we, uh, this, this was a long time in the, in the building of it. Um, and I just, I hope it'll inspire uh, people listening or they're even in their marriage and their family life or whatever age they are, even with their kids, like to speak this into them that, that God will um, invite us into something that is going to be a little scary but he wants us to obey that and to trust him. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of started to have a yellow light that was turning green, but my wife, Lori had a red light, maybe turning yellow, you know, about me being a, a composer. Are you kidding? Like a minister? Jesus, you got to show and, up, right? <laughs> right. So, and my, and my mom said, Oh, I'm, your music is so wonderful, but I'm so glad you have your day job. Yeah. Um, but then, but then my wife's dad, my father-in-law and God bless him for this, encouragement he said you know if god is telling you to do that then that's what you need to do yeah and so i i had i had some voices in my life from some co-workers and some people that had been touched by the music as it had started growing part-time that those voices became the strongest along with god's voice that there was something to this yeah because there were there were naysayers and there were people saying well how can god speak when there's no words or how can you be that good and, you know how how can you how can you be a composer? You know, you went to Georgia Tech, NBA, you know, financial planner. But God, right? <laughs> but God, right. So anyway, that's, I wanted to put some context to the story of just yeah. the journey of getting there because it's it's hard in the waiting. The waiting upon the Lord is hard. Yeah. Um, but he's moving all the time. But I do believe a lot of people that know know him um, can overweight. They can, they can wait too long. Yeah. And so I hope that might speak to somebody's heart too, to not, if God's really stirring something, waiting is part of the journey, like being patient and him revealing his plans. But if he's, if he's kind of been revealing and revealing and saying, okay, are you, let's go, let's go, you know, don't keep waiting too long because he has more for us. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. He directs our steps, right. As we're walking, he's, right. he's directed. That's right. You know, you're, right. I love what you're talking about. The two branches on the tree, you're describing a process. We talk about a lot in our mentoring program. I call it the bridge of going from where you mm -hmm. are now to, to where you're going to be going, you know, and that there are these, decisions like you're saying along the way that you've got to take right or left yes or no and that's either those decisions right. are either getting you closer you know or further away from the the vision that god's given you but one of the yes. things that i think i see really make a difference in the lives of artists who are able to turn their hobby into that faithful income stream that they can depend on in their business mm -hmm. uh through their creativity is uh, what I would call regulated cash flow, and I'm sure as a financial planner, you know, you can, you yeah. can appreciate that. There's at some point, you know, for you to be able to step out, there's got to be a flow of finances in your right. life for you to be able to make some decisions and make some informed risks about in order to to step out of a job or quit yeah. a part time job or you know whatever right. that is. So, right. how did that begin to form for you? Because I think you know, although I'm a musician and we work with a lot of musicians. I primarily work with visual artists. And um, yeah. I, I think musicians nowadays probably have a, a view a, of the two musicians versus visual artists. I think musicians have a harder time a lot of times okay. making that regulated cash flow yeah. um, happen in, in their life and business. So I'm right. just interested in how that's happened for you with multiple streams of income and, and right. you know, making a living from that. I know people still, I mean, I'll make a new friend, you know, and they say, how do you make, <laughs> how do you make a living? How do you have money? Right? Like, Learn you know? what I do. I know. And so, and we are, we are a bizarre couple and it's an odd ball kind of story. It's a, it is, but God, like, like he would take a chemistry MBA, you know, kind of analytic. Yeah. Um, my, my dad was a PhD analytical chemist and my mom was an art major and had a preschool. Wow. So she, the way I describe it is, so my dad's a research chemist and my mom finger painted with three-year-olds on the floor <laughs> and had three, three and boys that took, right. took, took the piano. Right. And I saw when I'm sitting at the piano in front of an audience, it's like, I'm a conflicted human being. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And we all, we all have a laugh about it because I'm this analytical detailed, you know, financial planning musician. And a lot of musicians don't have that side of the, their uh, interest or their ability as much like it, because there is a lot of 
uh, practical application to to good practices, good business practices. And but then there's the and we mentioned earlier how it's not all about the practical because God can do things that are beyond what we yeah. might think. And so what happened was there were some catalysts in my story saying, "Hey, you, know, you need to decide is this." going to be a ministry or we know it's a ministry but are you going to do a nonprofit 501c3 or are you just going to go at it as a artist in the business, yeah, the business of music right. and 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 Lori and I wanted to keep it simple and we really felt strongly that that this should just be God's ministry for his glory and we called it music to light the world and I began to invite I had there was this this uh friend that challenged me like you need to invite some people to 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 found your ministry you know financially um, and I was really scared. I had never asked for money like that before. Um, that was the spring of 2004. And I also was very, it was very delicate because I couldn't really ask clients. I couldn't ask financial planning clients, for just that fiduciary relationship and all. Sure. So, so um, it had to be some really, really special relationships and that had a little bit of means that, to, that people could give. So in our story, the, the, the big stretch was, to be a $5,000 founding donor. That's what God put on my heart. And not many people could do that. Yeah. But, but um, the first um, two people that I asked said, yes. Wow. Um, this is like March of 2004. And then it was kind of like one for two. Then it was like one for three, but about, about five out of eight, five out of eight people. I only asked eight people and wow. five people said, yes. So we had $25,000 made out to music to light the world. And I told Lori, honey, you know, this is, we got to, we got to try. Yeah. You know, God is, God has really done a miracle to, um, give us, give us a few months in the bank. Um, and that's, that, that was the huge, uh, indicator. And I say, you know, another thought I had as you were sharing a, a few minutes ago, um, that really has helped me is that there's an Oswald Chambers devotion. And I think it's March 20th. If people want to look at, look this up, um, he says, when we're following God, just keep moving forward unless the Holy Spirit checks you. Yeah. Like the Holy Spirit will say, whoa, 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 you know, or stop. Yeah. Or kind of check our spirit. Yeah. That helped me so much because as an analytical man, I mentioned about not overweighting as an analytic and an analysis paralysis and analyzing and waiting and sort of thinking and deciding and da da da, you know, just on and on you go. Waiting for the golden scrolls to come down. Right. We, right. We, our, our human nature wants God to speak to us like he did to Abraham or yeah. Moses or like, like say, hey, you know, Matt Stanton, this is what I want you to do yeah. right now. But we have to sort of be in touch with him and the Holy Spirit and prayer and the scripture and sort of take a step of faith. And if the spirit doesn't check us, keep taking those baby steps. Yeah. So, so that's what that's what happened is I, I was, I knew I needed to ask, even though it was scary and people said yes. And then a few months later, it was that uh, I had to turn in my notice at work and they gave me sort of an extended time to transition clients and things. Um, and then, and then on August 1st, 2004 was my first full-time day as founder of Music Light the World and a pianist composer with three albums, you know, and I had done a few concerts but it was a mystery, um, and, and the Lord just started to make a way. So we've we have uh, for for eighteen years, you know, we've had donations and music. And what's happened is, from the business side, the music has grown little by little. Yeah, it used to be a concert ministry where I would sell a lot of CDs after the concert. Sure. And and God, for such a time as this, that's how God kind of did the first ten plus years. Uh, but over, He's so amazing because He knows the earth and heaven and everything that's going to happen. He knew, he knew we'd be streaming music in 2022. So he starts to inch along and prepare the way. And I just learned as an artist, this is another word to everybody, whatever kind of creative they are is just to make your art available. Yeah. Like make create, create the art that God inspires you to create and then make it available. Cause I thought it had to be with a distributor or I thought it had to be on the shelf, so to speak, yeah. or with some big store or some other party. But the Lord, uh, you know, even uh, Chris Tomlin had a quote one time that the greatest publisher of music is the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I, that, that kind of inspired me that the greatest marketer of our life is God. Come on. <laughs> like, 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 so, 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 so I, what I, I tried some things and it didn't happen. And I'm like, oh, it wasn't supposed to be on shelves or in stores or it was going to be very different and very unique. And I think each of our stories is, is that unique to where God can provide a way. 
Um, and we, we had a great series even early this year on Jehovah Jireh and how he, he will see to it. He is our provider um, and he's done that. But now here I am, you know, 22 years after composing the first melody and the music income is fairly significant to where, wow. you know, I, I just wonder what my, the scary part now is Lord, um, that Jehovah Jireh uh, message at our at church at uh, Passion City Church was to um, lay down your, your the, like the, the miracle God's done, that you need to lay it on the altar and surrender the old miracle, which for me to be music like the world and yep. like what God has done so far, because he has a greater miracle. Come on. That's so and, he, good. and he talked, and he talked about putting when, when Abraham put, put Isaac on the altar to sacrifice Isaac and how Isaac was old enough to know all that was going on. He was probably a teen, late teen or maybe even 20 years old and how, so, and he was a miracle. Isaac was a miracle. He was Abraham and Sarah's miracle when they were like a hundred years old. And, and he, God had him put that miracle on the altar so that he could provide a sacrifice through that ram in the thicket mm -hmm. and do a greater miracle. So I'm really, God is not speaking clearly yet, but I'm really searching and asking, you know, what is, you know, I want to lay music like the world down. I want to name everything you've done so far because yeah. I feel like he's got more, more, he's got a greater miracle and it's kind of a mystery but this has become very redemptive in my that analytical part of me and just that that practical nature that Lori and I both love to know all the steps and we're good planners and make lists and all these things, you know, but like he's he's broken that in us over time yeah. to to be on this adventure with him uh, and to trust him. So um, I, I've got to you know, keep that a little bit of fear present, you know, to where I don't know exactly what God's going to do, but he's asking me to do something yeah. new or, and that's where sort of the film composing or the orchestration or this, the Berkeley school of music. I, I in 2019, I did a professional program there on film and composing for TV and film and orchestrating. So I learned that I could score for a symphony, like I can write for the whole symphony and do notation even, but it wow. takes me a long time, but yeah. I, I have a studio, I have a studio that has all the ability with the sounds and technology today versus 20 years ago that just sounds unbelievable. Um, every symphony, percussion, choir, all, all wow, the things wow. that are for your tip. So, so the piano is my instrument, but I'm really, I've almost been a composer more and God's just kind of showing me that along the way. Like I could just hear melodies and harmonies in my head and he just brings them down. Isn't um, it beautiful? You know, you think back to 2004, just because of the way technology's grown and the world's grown, you didn't even know that what you're yeah. doing now is a possibility, much less could have had vision for it back then. And right. I was just telling my son the other day, he's 18, graduating high school this year, you know, and, and all that. I don't know what I want to do yet. I said, buddy, I said, no, first of all, nobody knows what they want to do when they're 18 years old. But I said, the thing that you may be, you know, doing when you're my age may not even be invented yet. And you, it's just like what you're saying that you just keep saying yes, you keep moving forward. You keep being faithful to the thing right. that God's put in your hand. And, you know, it's like that verse in Proverbs, man plans his, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord orders yeah. his steps. And it's like, Amen. it's not either or, right? It's we got to get right. in there, do the work. We plan, we dream, we put it out there and the Lord, right. we offer it to him and he orders our right. steps. And Right. Well, two, two of my life verses from early on, and I, I did not memorize a lot of scripture as a teenager, but um, fear not for I'm with you yeah. and be not dismayed for I'm your God. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. I'll uphold you with my victorious right hand. That was like in the ninth grade and yeah. the older lady at the church helped me memorize a verse because fear is an issue for me. Yeah. Um, and Philipp Philippians four, six, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, present your request to God. Then the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Yeah. And, uh, so anxiety and fear are real for me. And that sometimes comes with that analytical, mathematical sure. uh, analysis paralysis kind of wiring, you know, that God makes us all so beautiful and so unique. But, but I've really uh, ha had to embrace it or just trust God with to not be afraid, you know? That's right. Um, That's right. And, and so, and to be, when you mention your son at 18, like wh whoever's listening, if it's can be their own life, it can be their spouse, it could be a child, it could be a friend. But if we can be that person that you and I both kind of alluded to that didn't exist for us enough to speak life into our passion and our dream and yeah. our gifting and our talent, yeah. if we can be one of those people, because this changed my parenting. Like mm -hmm. our children, 
Jacob and Caroline, I said, you know, you can do anything and God can do anything in your life. Like he can, he's done this for me and mom. And I had no idea. And yeah. we knew, you know, but it's so much intellectual for so many of us for so long until you really surrender and you really ask him what he would have you to do. And you start to see him displaying his, his faithfulness and his, his provision. Um, it, it's mind blowing. I mean, it really, it just transforms your, your life. And I think Jesus wants to, to know that in our life and it's yeah. okay if it hadn't happened yet, you know, he's, he's so patient and in eternity, everything's so short here in this, in this right. scale. Um, <laughs> but I, I really love inspiring young people and other people. I'm, I'm going to be a, uh, you know, an encourager. I'm going to be a life, a life giver. I want to speak life into yeah. people. And I think, I think the people that did that for me w- helped me get through another day and some hard years or hard days or weeks, you know, when we didn't know it was this thing going to make it and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, man, you're doing it right now. And I'm just so appreciative that you would be share, be willing to share your story and all that God's continue to do in your yeah. life. I know that folks are going to want to connect with you further on social, right. grab some of your music and, uh, read about yeah. all the awards, all that you've all that's got all the great things that God's doing in your life. Mm-hmm. So where's the best place that they can connect with you online to kind of take the next step with you? Well, I, the website is stantonlanier.com, but even more so for people, just if they put my name in their favorite, favorite streaming service, which, you know, Spotify or Apple music or Pandora yeah. or Amazon music or YouTube, you know, I, I've got a lot of YouTube videos and even some workshop kind of things I've done there around how I take the Bible and write music. Um, the website will help people find that too, but just the, there's about 150 tracks now to, to be received by listeners. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's to help people know the peace of God, the beauty and the hope of God in a, in a quiet and uplifting way. They're all very different. Some are very, very peaceful and calming and some are a little more uplifting and inspiring, Yeah. but it's, it's this instrumental worship where my passion for that is that God can speak when there's no words. Yeah. The Holy spirit can speak to us with words that are so specific to us in that, in that God encounter is what yeah. I call it. A God encounter is so instead of us singing to him, he's singing to us through the instrumental. And that, mm. that's a, that's been incredible that for the testimonies of people and what it means. So I, I hope it'll really inspire him. I love people. it. I love it. Well, yeah. guys definitely go to stantonlanier.com. You can get the link right here in the show notes and, uh, connect with him and uh, download his music, share it. And uh, Stanton, thank you so much. It's a joy to get to know you more. I'm sure our paths are going to cross again. Yes. And I hope you're going to have a, a ton of people that come to your website and find out more about what you're doing. So mm-hmm. thanks so much for being on the podcast today.